Hey, what's going on guys? So today we're looking at a new brand called literally New Knives, right? It's spelled N-U-K-N-I-V-E-S. So when I first got this knife, actually the, I believe the J was the first one I uh, was using. And um, I was calling this Nuke Knives because it's N-U-K is just, it kind of stands out, but duh, the knives is, you know, using the K. So anyway, so I have to change how my, my mind works because I'm still want to call on these nuke knives, but they're not. They are new knives, N-U. Now this particular uh, company is somewhat new. They actually just came out with a second model. This was the only model they were making for a while. Now they basically have this handle with, you guessed it, a utility blade holder, all right, which is oh so popular. Um, but anyway, I've had these for months and months and months. I've actually accumulated the blue one, I think it was the orange one, which I started carrying later on, but now I have the whole set. So real quick, let's take a close up look at this knife. All right, and go over some specs real quick. All right, so closed here, 3.9 inches. Our blade is 2.99 inches. It is a D2. No surprise, very popular. This one's actually done very well, and it was actually sharpened really nice from the factory. All right, I definitely appreciate that. So sharp out of the box. Sometimes these budget knives don't always come sharp, but being that I literally have every single color, they are all exactly the same. So thumbs up for Chinese uh, production consistency. That's one thing that usually lacks. You kind of get, you know, hit and miss when it comes to the, uh, the budget knives out there. Some people love them, other people hate them. And it's not because they necessarily hate the knife. It's just the one they got wasn't good. But having five of these now <laughs> over the course of multiple months, probably close to a year even, um, they're all very consistent. All right, so uh, 6.9 inches overall, if I didn't mention that. 3.3 ounces on this guy. All right, I don't know if you could tell with this jade, it might be a little easier, but there are cutouts on the liner lock side as well as the top. You see all that jade poking through. All right, the liners are actually polished inside and out. Um, the one thing uh, I could say right off the bat that I don't like about the knife, and it's not a huge deal, but if you notice, the liners are just a hair shorter than the scales. I don't know, this is just a common thing. I don't know why, you know, companies do this, but if I come in close, you can see at the end of that scale, we have a little bit of that handle poking out. Now the handle is super smooth. It's very well rounded and polished, all right? You can see it shining and glistening. The problem is that when I'm holding this, all right, there's a little jimping on the blade, which you do actually feel. I got the camera to focus there. Uh, the problem is my thumb and even on my, my uh, other fingers, it's resting on the frame. And this has a nice, somewhat textured uh, scale on here, a G10. And I much prefer the uh, the feeling of the G10. So it's just, it's preference. I would like these scales. And again, it's a better finished look by doing this. And it, it, again, it stands out and it's polished and it's wonderful. I'm just talking about from a, an ergo um, you know, point of view. It's not that it's uncomfortable at all. It's just, I much would prefer resting on the scales as opposed to the liners. However, this was done right in that they're super polished, so it's not uncomfortable. And the jimping that's just on the blade here, you can actually feel. It does facilitate a little bit of grip, albeit not all that much, and there's nothing on the spine of the blade. What is kind of fascinating on this guy is that they chamfered the finger troll. And, you know, these little finger trolls, I got big old chunky fingers. I mean, I don't know, never been to China before, but I assume that a lot of Chinese uh, people have smaller hands than I. Um, maybe that's wrong to make the assumption. I don't know, but, uh, this is kind of a fingertip troll for me. I mean, it's just, just get your fingertip in there, but I did use it just to see, and I had no problem. It's not like it was riding forward. I just kind of did some quick cuts where I, I purposely put my fingertip because this one at being the size that it is, it's, it's almost like just the fingertip. It's not even like a half toil or anything. I really didn't want to ride up on that blade. Now, obviously what I like about that is that it is easy to sharpen. I have not needed to sharpen any of these. I just uh, stropped it up. But that edge, that cutting edge comes all the way down here, right? And then obviously this acts like a large, you know, blade choil. So you could sharpen right up to the edge, which is very nice. So I do like the design quite a bit. Um, pocket clip is fantastic. This has the like deep conceal. So this thing's sticking up past the knife, all right? There's a cutout on either side, so it is swappable. I do appreciate that. They put another screw in here. All right, there is a uh, big old lanyard hole in there. Again, polished clip. Uh, the blade itself is not, you know, polished, but it's a very, you know, high satin finish on there. By the uh, light glare from overhead, you can probably see that it is hollow grounds. Uh, D2 drop point. 
I mean, it's a good looking knife. I actually really like the, the profile overall. I think it's kind of aggressive looking, it's cool. It is very comfortable. That pocket clip, even though it's huge and sticking out the end, it is not creating any hot spots for me. And I can really use this hard and not have to uh, worry about any kind of irritation or anything in my, uh, my palm. I do like the presentation side pivot. So you see there's no screw. It's on the back side of the screw head. This does have bearings, so it is super smooth. All right, the action on this is actually really nice. You would not expect that. Now, did you catch that? I went like this. And I do that a lot with this knife. And that is the, the one of my other you know pitfalls of this particular knife is the thumb studs on this guy are very rounded. Okay, and they are thumb studs, they're not blade stops, see they don't even touch the handle there. They're big, so it's nice to and easy to grab them. However, they're extremely rounded. It's almost like two, you know, like ball shapes, all right, almost completely round. So quite often I end up doing that. I go to just give it a thumb flick, and I just don't have enough meat of my uh, my thumb on there, and it just grazes over the top. Happens all time with this one. All right, I have to really be conscious of putting my thumb, you know, deep behind it and getting enough of that actual, you know, finger on there to pop it open. Now, if you notice, there is a little nub on the tip here. All right, so you can front flip this. All right, that jimping helps a little bit. I'm not a huge fan, <laughs> and there's two reasons why. Number one, this has a fantastic detent. That's what creates all that pressure so that when it does pop with the thumb studs, it shoots out. I mean, it flies out. This thing is, is lightning fast. Because of that, the, the front flipping action to use the front flipper takes a little more pressure. And this literally acts like a point. Okay, this, this it digs into my, my finger. It's just uh, not a comfortable front flipper at all. The option is there. Like I said, some people might really get used to that. For this one, I just, I haven't really... I haven't dug it at all. I'm just using the, the thumb studs for this guy. Uh, and then, you know, when I do, obviously I'm, I'm trying to be conscious of putting it, uh, you know, behind there so I'm not gonna slip off of it. So yeah, I mean, it looks great. It's affordable and that $40 price tag, D2. I mean, as far as performance, it's about run of the mill these days. I mean, the, um, the action is fantastic, but it's not the only one. You know, in the $40 price range, you can get plenty of knives out there with some, um, you know, bearing systems in it so they're nice and smooth. Uh, advantages, again, the deep conceal clip that is swappable, left hand or right hand carry is huge. Uh, I think the variety of colors is nice, it's a nice option. Overall, I just really like the design. This is a very good just go-to beater. I don't know if I mentioned it already, this, uh, the name of this one is Companter. I don't know what that means. K-U-M-P-A-N-T-E-R. Maybe that translates to companion. I, maybe, completely not. I don't know. Uh, you guys let me know. What is a Companter? But that's the uh, the name of this guy. Overall, I have to say I'm a big fan, though. I think it's fantastic. And it's kind of hard because over the years... Oh, I did it again. Good thing I'm catching some of this on camera. Just playing around with this thing, too. Same thing. I'll, I, nine or ten times I'll open it, and then there'll be one of these little flubs where it just does not... does not, does not open. It, it's just... Uh, it's so smooth. And you think that'd be a good thing. You know, I've, I've done countless... You know, knife testing and reviews over the years, and sometimes I'm like, ah, eh, some says it's a little, little rough. I wish it was smoother. Smoother is good, but there's definitely a point that's too smooth. This one happens to be so incredibly rounded and smooth that uh, it's counterproductive. I might even, after the fact, after I've used these and I'm doing this video now, I might just hit this with a little bit of sandpaper just to roughen it up just a little bit so I don't want to slide off of it. I just want to catch that to be able to open it. But as you can see, I mean, they're lightning fast. The lockup is fantastic. I have no problems with liner locks in general, but this one happens to just lock up really nice, so no issues at all there. Like I said, very well finished. Plenty of different cool colors, depending on what your you know, EDC is looking like, if you want to color match things. Um, it's just another one of the options in the countless sea of like sub $75 Chinese made, but just really good quality folders. It kind of comes down to what design do you like? You know, some people might focus on certain aspects like that deep concealed pocket clip more. You know, this might be an option for you. Again, there's um, texturing on these handles. Actually, let's see, the, well, maybe the blue will show that off the most. So they are textured, they're not rough. It's not a rough grip. There you go, you can see that grid pattern there. The G10 has some texture to it, but it's definitely not like extra grippy or any kind of concern at all as far as carrying your pocket. Um, it's just a really cool knife. Honestly, I, I really do dig it a lot. Uh, it's now, as far as putting this in the pocket, 
you know, when I carry folders, 99.9% .9 of the time I'm carrying my front right pocket of my pants, right? My main folder. Sometimes I'll have it in the cargo park, uh, excuse me, cargo pocket of my um, shorts or pants. You know, sometimes I'll have it clipped to my back pocket for like a few minutes. Not, I don't really do that all day, but you know, occasionally I'll try something different or I'm literally just changing things out so I have it in a different location. But more times than not, front right pocket of my pants or shorts. Now, I was concerned that this little nub would be uncomfortable when I'm dipping in the pocket for other things. I go to reach out and rub, but I had no problems at all. Uh, generally, I only have issues with that with flippers because obviously they stick out on the spine part of the knife. This is obviously against the seam, so as I'm dipping in, sometimes, you know, a gnarly flipper, they'll uh, rub on the side of my hand. No issues at all. I mean, my initial impressions, I thought, eh, that's, that's uncomfortable. Again, it's uncomfortable for the front flipping portion, but uh, as far as in the pocket, no issues. So it's kind of a cool bonus with this one. Not that it really matters, and you guys know, I'm almost never focused on packaging and stuff, but I really like these pouches. Uh, these didn't have a box, just had this pouch and the paperwork in here. And this pouch obviously could be, you know, used again. Um, I foresee this would be cool for a lot of people, just a, a coin pouch. You know, the, the problem though is that you're not gonna get this knife for the pouch. It's just, it's just a bonus. I just like that, you know, boxes I usually chuck, unless it's a really expensive knife or a collectible knife or rare or something, I get rid of packaging. Uh, little cloths and stuff, those are cool. I use them for my, you know, cleaning my eyeglasses and things around the house, but I don't really care if they're there or not. This pouch, if you happen to be one of the people who are newer, let's say, to EDC or something, this could be your minimalist wallet. This could literally just be a change pouch. You put a bunch of loose change in here, right? And keep this inside your uh, vehicle, keep it in your glove box, keep it in your center console, whatever. So when you need loose change, there it is. You don't have to keep it in your pocket. So if you're going to drive through a lot or whatever. So like I said, it's kind of kind of cool. You know, uh, I'm not getting rid of these. I have a pouch for each one of these knives. And um, I kind of like the idea of repurposing them. I right? you can see the logo on the side there, new knives, just kind of cool. It's just I dig it. It's got a little loop here. If you want to put a carabiner on, on this or something, let's say, I don't know, you want to put your headphones or something in a pouch and you carabiner this to a bag or something like that. Like you can get super creative with pouches and, and little pockets and such. But anyway, so that was kind of a cool bonus. Here is the paperwork. You can pause there if you want to read all that stuff. Storage, maintenance, sharpening, cleaning. All right, there's the uh, instructions before use. Welcome to the family. I should open this up. There's contact information if you need to, social media, and the rest. So there's their, their paperwork. Really straightforward and simple. They don't really tell you how to use a knife. It's just kind of, here's how to contact us, you know, and here's how to clean it, sharpen it. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Again, the D2 in this specifically worked well. It did dull out. Like I said, I had to um, strop this a few times. I carried the, uh, the Jade one, blue. Actually, I think I carried all of them except for the black one. Just because I, you know, over time getting the different colors and stuff and or carrying the different colors, just kind of cool. It was the same knife I was familiar with, but just a different look. That's all. Just to uh, change up the EDC a little bit. So new knives, Companter. Let me know what that means first off, and uh, let me know if you've ever seen these before. Again, just one of the one of the many many knives available through Amazon, but it might be overlooked. So I wanted to uh, check these out. I wanted to uh, talk about them a little bit. Let me know if you got the newest version. Again, just kind of briefly looking at the website. Recently, I want to say a week ago, two weeks ago, something like that, because I was uh, carrying the orange one. And um, I did notice they have a brand new design that it's basically, like I said, the same. I think it's the same handle. I might be wrong, but I think it's the same exact handle, exactly, just instead of a regular uh, D2 blade there, they have the holder for the, uh, you know, um, razor blades, the utility knife blades. So, anyway, that's all. Thanks for watching. If you guys happen to have a uh, super budget, you know, what's the latest and greatest on Amazon type thing, feel free to share it below. But uh, but yeah, for 40 bucks, the quality is definitely here. And it's a cool design. That's what attracted me most is this kind of wider blade here and a little bit of a narrower handle. I think it's aggressive looking. I like that. I like when there's a lot of blade and less handle. You know, I absolutely love OTFs. But generally speaking, wait, what do you get in an OTF? Big, chunky, wide handle and dinky little blade. Why? Because the blade has to be completely enclosed inside and you need mechanisms to make it come in and out. You know, so like, you know, I love OTFs. Visually, a lot of those uh, aren't as, you know, sexy and nice and just aesthetically pleasing really to me than some folders like this. And especially I like folders with big blades and somewhat narrow handles. So anyway, that's all. New knives, come panter. 
Let me know what you think down in the comment section, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.